would be most useful for you in our conversation today? Um, so I've started with my personal statement. Um, I am having a little bit of issues um, because when I started the process of the law school application, um, I was under the impression from somebody, some advice I received from um, another gentleman who said that um, pretty much community college classes don't matter and that I can just go in with my university credits. And with that, I have a 3.8 and I have about 10 years worth of community college, you know, grades that at, you know, the time before I even knew I wanted to even become a lawyer, um, I didn't take school as seriously. So, um, I'm pretty much kind of, I started my statement as a 3.8 student and trying to use that as a way of expressing, you know, the leadership qualities that I have and stuff like that. Um, but now I feel like I'm kind of backtracking and trying to talk about, you know, why, you know, the last, you know, 10 years of community college weren't good and trying to tie that in with, you know, that was the old me and I'm not like that anymore. Right, right. Well, to me, those are actually two different statements. You could write an addendum explaining the low GPA from mm -hmm. your community college days, and then you can have a personal statement focused on the softball, if that's what you want to cover there. Okay. Two separate statements, that, though. Okay. So the way that I kind of try to tie it in, is that even worth it, or should I just stick to what I had before? Because I kind of try to add it in at the end um, without even really addressing it. And so was that a good introduction to that? And then my addendum kind of explains everything, or is that not enough? I don't think you need to tie it into your personal statement. You don't need to spend so much of your application talking about it. Lots of people have lower GPAs, especially earlier in their academic careers. So it's nice mm -hmm. that you have an upward trend, especially going from community college to university, two very different contexts. So I would okay. not cover it in the personal statement. Leave it for an addendum and be very concise about it there. Mm -hmm. And then when I was you know, kind of tying in softball with kind of what I'm doing now, um, I'm in a, you know, human resources position. Should I go more into depth on what I do here? Because I do work for a nonprofit. I do handle more of the legalities of human resources, like the employment relations stuff. Um, should I tie that more in or should I just leave what I have now? I actually have a different recommendation altogether, which is that okay. you don't cover any of that other stuff. Have one major focus for your personal statement. You start off with the softball. That's a major theme for most of the personal statement. Then towards the end, you're bringing in all these other things from your resume, which is a, a common thing that students want to do. You want to describe and talk about everything, but there simply isn't the space. This is already much too long and you'll want to cut it mm -hmm. down. And I think the simplest way to cut it down is to remove all the other stuff, laundry listing the various things you've done. Other stuff. And then what, should I just leave that on the resume and let that speak for itself? Or should I just find another way to add that in? From what I'm seeing in it, I would leave it off altogether. Just keep it on the resume. If you had reason to write another essay, you could talk about perhaps one of those things. So for example, a lot of schools will have a diversity statement. Perhaps you can find a way to describe one of these other activities in there. Mm -hmm. Schools will all sometimes have a why our school in particular essay you might find a way to tie in some of your activities there. Or they ask, is there anything else you want to tell us? And if you feel you have something compelling enough to share, you could use that space to describe that. Okay. And then my last question is, um, I like I said, I had the issue with community college. And part of me wants to take courses over and say, because I'm at a 2.8 if I smush everything together. So part of me is saying, go and take some units over for the next semester and try to like get easy classes that you can get an A in to bring that up to a 3.0. Or is that not even worth it? And I should just spend the time studying for the LSAT. I'm going to say the LSAT. Okay. So you don't think it even matters that there's a lot of low grades on there? I don't think it's worth your time. I think your time is far better spent just getting the highest LSAT score possible, especially when you consider that your LSAT score weighs more heavily than your entire undergraduate GPA combined. So what's really gonna move the needle for you is getting your LSAT up even just a couple of points more. That's what I thought. Okay, thank you so much. I really do appreciate your time. My pleasure. Any other questions for today? Um, do you think the way that my personal statement was written, do you think that 
you know, there's things I should change or grammatically or anything like that? Or am I, am I good? I'm not going to cover the grammar aspect because I'd r rather okay. focus with you on the, on the big picture here. Okay. One thing I would suggest is rather than describing your story chronologically, I would suggest instead starting with a specific moment in time, really make this more of a story, make it more of a narrative rather than chronology. You're nine years old, you're 16, year, 16 years old, you're, you're pr progressing in age and in your athletic career. I think the best stories start with a, a good hook. So there's a particular moment in time where you face an obstacle or a triumph and how you handle it and what you learn from it. And then zoom out and talk about the bigger picture. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Before we sign off, what would you say is mm -hmm. the biggest insight you got from our call today? Honestly, just a lot of questions that I've been kind of, you know, a lot of people that are trying to do this whole law school thing is that they go to boards and they go to different people trying to get information and it's kind of not backed up with any type of science or anything like that. Um, I've been on like Reddit and stuff like that, trying to get these certain questions asked, but it's, you're asking a bunch of people that are going through the same thing you are. And so hearing it from you, I know I've watched a lot of your videos. I know that you know what you're talking about and I do respect your opinion. And I really do think that the questions that I had towards my personal statement and returning to school just to take those classes over really does mean a lot. Awesome. Glad to help. Please keep in touch and let me know if I can help in any way as you move forward. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.